the bell icon to turn on notifications. Protecting your workbook in Excel is a great way to prevent other people from making changes to your workbook. And in some cases, even control exactly which cells they can edit information. And there are three ways that you can do this. You can protect the worksheet. You can protect the entire workbook. You can protect the worksheet. You can protect the entire workbook, or you can protect specific cells. And we're going to look at all of these different methods in this lesson. Now, before we begin, let's make sure we understand the data that we're looking at. So I just have a sample invoice for a company called Learn for Fun Limited. And you can see that we have some invoice items listed in column A. We have the quantity in column B, the price per item in column C, and then we have our line totals in column D. And in column D, we have a formula. So if we take a look at the formula bar, you can see we have this little if formula just here. And all this basically says is if cell A6 is empty, if that's true, it's going to do nothing. If that's false and there is an item listed here, it's going to perform the calculation C6 multiplied by B6, which will give us our line total. And I have this formula structured this way mainly so that if I copy this formula down, I don't get any errors just here. Because if there is no item listed in column A, it's not going to perform the calculation. Now, it might be that I want to send this invoice template or this invoice to somebody else in my team, but I don't want them to edit the formulas that I have in column D. Now, if I don't want them to be able to edit anything on this worksheet, I could simply protect the worksheet. Now, you'll find your protection options on the review tab in the protect group. And the first option here is protect sheet. And it says prevent unwanted changes from others by limiting their ability to edit. So if I click on protect sheet, I can put a password on this particular sheet. And if I put a password on, it's going to protect the worksheet and the contents of locked cells. And then underneath, I have two items selected by default. And these two are the only things that people will be able to do with this worksheet. So they're going to be able to select locked cells and select unlocked cells. So it basically means they can click on cells, but they can't do anything else. They can't change it. They can't edit them. They can't format them. They can't insert anything either. So I'm going to put a quick password on here and click on OK. I'm going to re-enter the password and click on OK again. So now notice that I can click around on this worksheet. I can effectively select cells. But if I try to go in and make a change here, it's going to pop up with an error message. And it tells me that the thing that I'm trying to do is on a protected sheet. So to make any changes, I need to unprotect the sheet first. So if I do have the password, I could click unprotect sheet and then enter in that password to unlock it. And now I can go in and I can make any changes that I need to. So protecting the sheet is your first method. You can password protect it and choose what people can do with those cells. The next option we have is to protect the entire workbook. Now, this is slightly different. If we hover over, it says keep others from making structural changes to your workbook, such as moving, deleting or adding sheets. And that is the key thing here, structural changes. And what we mean by that is currently, if I wanted to, I could click the plus symbol at the bottom to add a new worksheet. I can right click, I can delete the worksheet, I can rename it, so on and so forth. If I protect the workbook, it's not going to allow me to do that. So let's click protect workbook. Again, it's going to ask me for a password. So I'm going to set a password to protect the structure. Let's re-enter it. And now if I try to click the plus, it's not going to let me do that. If I try and right click on the current worksheet, notice pretty much all of the options are grayed out. So I can't insert, I can't delete, I can't rename, I can't change anything about the structure until I unprotect this workbook. So if I go back up to my protect group and click protect workbook again, it's going to ask me to enter the password to unprotect that workbook. And now that I've done that, I can go back to adding in and changing the structure. 
So that is the difference between the two. One protects the actual worksheet, the other one protects the structure of the workbook. And it might be that you want to apply both of these to really lock down the entire workbook. That is absolutely fine. You can set a password to protect the sheet and also protect the workbook structure. Now, the final option you have when it comes to protection is you can protect individual cells. So it might be that I want to send this workbook to a colleague and I am happy for them to add new items to this invoice and add quantities and prices, but I don't want them to be able to edit the formulas that I have in column D. And the way that I've set up this invoice is that as soon as I add a new item, and the quantity and the price, the formula in the cell is going to automatically work out the line total. So I don't want anybody messing with these formulas and breaking them effectively. So what I can do here is choose just to protect the cells in column D. Now, the way you need to think about this when you're doing it is it kind of works a little bit backwards. By default, all cells in Excel are locked. Now you might be thinking to yourself, well, how is that the case? Because as we know, you can click in any cell and you can type. They don't look locked, but they are in fact locked by default. The only reason that you can type is because there is no protection applied to workbooks and worksheets by default. As soon as you go to the review tab and protect the sheet, it invokes locking. Now, if you don't believe me on this one, if we click on a cell, right click our mouse and go down to format cells, Notice that you have a tab in here called protection and take a look at what is currently selected locked. Now you'll find that whatever cell you click on in your worksheet, it's going to be a locked cell. But because I don't have protection applied, I can type into the cells. So the way that we have to do this is we need to select the cells that we want to allow users to type into and unlock them prior to protecting the sheet. So maybe I want them to be able to edit all of these cells just here. I'm going to right click. I'm going to go back into format cells and I'm going to use the keyboard shortcut this time of control one. We're on the protection tab and I'm going to unlock these cells and click on OK. And then I'm going to protect the sheet. I'm going to add in my password and let's confirm that password. So now I can go in and I can start adding things to the cells that I've unlocked. But if I try and make any edits to this line total, it's going to say that I can't do it. So every cell is now locked apart from these ones that I selected. So that is how protecting cells works. It is a little bit of a backwards way of thinking. Now, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to reverse this. I'm going to unprotect the sheet. Let's type in the password. I'm going to choose these cells again, control one, and I'm going to lock them just to put everything back to how it was. Now, there is one final way that you can apply protection to your workbooks, and that is by going to the file tab and I can choose save as, and let's just select a folder to save this into what I could do from this save as window is click on the tools drop down, go to general options, and then I can set a password to open and modify this file. So if I do this, let's add a password and also a password to modify and click on OK. Need to enter it one more time. Now I can click on save. And if I close this document down, so let's go to file close and then try and reopen it, it's going to ask me for a password. So using this method, they can't even open the file without knowing what the password is. If you're not a subscriber, click down below to subscribe so you get notified about similar videos we upload. To see the full course that this video came from, click over there and click over there to see more videos from Simon Says It.